My current Windows 11 setup is basically a copy of Linux, but I finally listened to you guys and I've been trying Linux for the last month. But was it worth it? Should you try it? And why some people say it's better than the rest of operating systems? So this was my main goal, get a working Linux setup that lets me browse, take notes and customizing it a little bit. But there's one problem that I don't know how I'm going to solve. But why not just stay in Windows with a setup that looks like Linux? Because that's what I've been doing and there's nothing wrong with that. But I wanted to try the real thing. And if you're tired of all the useless apps that slow down your PC in Windows, you get random updates while you're doing something burnt and the ads, then you might want to watch this. To get Linux, the first thing I had to do was to pick a distro and a desktop environment. If you know about Linux, just skip to this part of the video so you can skip the explanation. But if you're new to all of this, the Linux distribution is basically a complete operating system built on top of the Linux kernel. The kernel is the part that talks directly to your hardware and makes sure everything runs, which is open source, meaning that it's free and available for anyone to modify it. And that's the super simplified version, by the way. So that's why there are so many versions of Linux, like Ubuntu, Mint, Fedora, Pop OS, Arch, and so on. Then we have the desktop environment. This is like the visual interface, what you see and interact with, like the windows, menus, and things like that. And even if you're using different distros, you can still run the same desktop environment. For example, Ubuntu and Arch can both use GNOME or Hyperland. It's kind of like swapping launchers on your phone, just to make the icons and appearance look different. So here's what I picked for my first setup. Arch is my distro and Hyperland as my desktop environment. But why did I choose this? The main reason is actually because of Hyperland. With Hyperland, I can get the exact experience I'm looking for. Workspaces, tile and windows so they resize automatically, navigate as much as I can with my keyboard, not my mouse, and some clean animations. But now comes the first problem. How do I install Arch? Installing a Linux distro can be exactly like installing Windows, where you boot your PC with an USB stick and go through a setup, selecting your disk, language, disabling all the things that Windows wants you to enable, and when you use some other Linux distro, things can get harder as someone without any prior Linux experience. So this is what you see instead of a setup. You just can't install it that easily. So I watched a few videos and found that there's a whole script to make things easier and an entire wiki that explains you how everything works. Which of course, I read through loudly before installing it. Obviously. But as a beginner, setting up everything by myself would take me way too long before I would be able to try Arch and Hyperland and see if I like it. So that's when I found DHH, the creator of Ruby on Rails. If you know about programming, you might know him, and he actually put together a fully configured version of Arch and Hyperland named Omachi. And that was exactly what I needed. And on top of that, he made a full step by step guide explaining how to set it all up. Read the guide, and after a couple of minutes, I was already in Hyperland. Everything was just so smooth. But after tweaking some things, learning how to download programs with Pac-Man, and learning how to do basic stuff with the terminal and nano, something wasn't working. You see the resolution? This wasn't right. I couldn't set the resolution to 4K, which is the one that uses my monitor. And I literally spent hours trying to fix this. Adjusting the virtual machine settings, I was basically using my computer inside another computer. That's a virtual machine. Then I also tried searching Reddit. I watched endless YouTube videos and I asked ChatGPT to help me. And the worst part, I couldn't fix it. So. This was my first experience with Arch fail. It was definitely a skill issue because I'm a beginner, Omachi is great, and just imagine if I had to install everything from scratch, it would have been even worse. So that's why I wanted to try Omachi, but I didn't want to give up. I wanted to try Hyperland and actually use it with my resolution and for a longer time because I only spent a few hours with it. And that's when I had to make a decision. Do I just give up and try a more beginner distro or should I give it a try again and try to find another solution? So after thinking for a bit, I remember watching this video. This is Heidi, another fully configured version of Arch using Hyperlink. So I install Arch with the same Arch install script again and then run a few commands to install HiDE. But did it work? I think so. Everything was working just fine, but for some reason the audio was choppy, but I fixed it thanks to this video. Once I fixed that, it took me a little bit of time to understand how the shortcuts work in HiDE and trying to find all the things that were installed with it. But everything's really well explained in the wiki, but I still had the same problem. 
the resolution. But this time, I found the solution. For some reason, the 4K resolution wasn't working when I was applying it in the Hyperland config file. That it would be hyperland.conf if I had installed Hyperland from scratch. But since I'm using IDE, it's actually monitors.conf. So why wasn't it working? Because Grav didn't even know that resolution was available. To fix it, I had to add the resolution to Grav, which is the bootloader, the program that boots up your system, and it runs before Linux. So by editing it to Grav and then setting the resolution in the monitors.com file, it finally worked. So once I finally got my Linux setup running without any major issues, I did notice a little bit of input lag, probably because of the virtual machine. But honestly, I didn't really care that much. But even though some things were kind of slow, I just couldn't believe how smooth everything was. But I only achieved the first part of my goal, get a functioning Linux system to browse and take notes. But I needed to continue with the second part, customizing it just a little bit. And guys, here's where I just completely lost my mind. Rising. Rising is customizing the appearance of your Linux setup. And some people take it very seriously, as you can see. So I wanted to customize IDE because it's not bad, but it's not what I wanted. So the perfect place to take inspiration from is the Unix port subreddit. Something I absolutely love about this subreddit is how everyone is not only sharing screenshots or videos of their setups, but they also share their settings in the description. So you can basically use their settings to understand how everything works, or just use them. After taking some inspiration from the subreddit, I need to know what to customize. Like how do I change the taskbar for example, or the icons that I have here. So after a little bit of research in the IDE wiki, I knew exactly what those apps were. Rofi is the app launcher, Waybar the taskbar, and then of course Hyperland the desktop environment. Then you also have the file explorer, the lock screen, and a lot more things, but I wanted to start with the things I would be using the most. So I spent a few days trying to understand how to customize everything, and while it might seem like you need to be a programmer to understand all the code, it's not that difficult. You just have to ask ChatGPT to help you do that. And I don't know how many times I said ChatGPT in this video, but it's been really useful. Although I recommend you to only use it when you don't know how to search for something, and instead look for Reddit or some random forums, because if you're running with some issues, sometimes ChatGPT just makes you lose more time, but it really depends what you're asking. And where it's really useful is to edit code, because that way you can understand how to change things by yourself. And after some tinkering here and there, I realized it was taking me way too long. This is my first time using Linux, and trying to set up every app just as I wanted would take me a lot of time, and I wasn't actually using Linux as a daily basis or in my free time. I was just using it to customize everything, and that's not really what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to use it as a normal person, to browse, watch videos, learn things, and make these videos. And that's part of the reason why I haven't posted in a while. So this is what I ended up with. For the taskbar, very simple. On the left, you've got the apps I'm running. In the middle, there's the time and the workspaces. And on the right, the tray icons. This should be the icon to turn off the PC, but I don't know what I did and it doesn't work. So to turn off the virtual machine, I just do it on the VM settings. So I go here and um, power off. Or if I don't want to do that, I just open the terminal and write shutdown now. I also use the idle inhibitor so the PC doesn't lock, since I kept getting this weird error from Hyperlock whenever I stepped away for a few minutes. And yeah, I tried doing what it says here, but it didn't work, so I'll just fix that later. What I like about the taskbar is that I can still see the wallpaper from here, so for example, if I want to change the workspace, I can still see the wallpaper right here. And the taskbar colors changes accordingly to the wallpaper, so if I want to change the wallpaper like this, it changes accordingly. And it's all because it just has some blur and I lower the opacity of it. Then we have Hyperland, where I change the animations as you can see. There are many of them in IDE. So if I press Super Shift Y, here you have the animation menu where I can just change the animation. Let's just choose, for example, Diablo 2. Let's see how it works. Oh, this one looks really good. Huh? I think I'm just gonna stick with this one. It's kind of slow, but maybe I just can fix it later. Then I have the basic shortcuts, so I can move the windows just like this. This looks really slow, but it shouldn't be that slow, and that's because of the input lag. I can also move a window to another workspace, so I just move this window to the second workspace. I don't know how to close this menu. Oh my god. Then I also remove the borders for the unfocused windows. If I have my mouse right here, then this is the focus window. So as you can see in the right window, I don't have any borders because I just don't like them. Then I also have Rofi, which is the app launcher to just open whatever app you want. I use someone else's config that I don't remember who it was, but I'll try to find it. So I will leave it in the description. Then I also have the alt tab with this menu, where I can just type, for example, Obsidian. 
and it will take me to the workspace where I have Obsidian and that's the configuration but there is still one problem that I'm trying to solve you can't use Adobe apps in Linux and that's a deal breaker for me because I work as a video editor and I also make these videos and that's why I've been using Linux in a virtual machine until a few days ago when I got my hands on this old laptop and decided to install Arch completely from scratch no machi no high DE. I wanted to set up everything by myself but this is probably a topic for another video okay anyway back to Adobe I'm sure there might be people that don't have this issue because they don't use Photoshop or Premiere Pro so I thought about having a dual boot so I would use Windows while I work and edit these videos and then use Linux when I'm not using any Adobe apps and I'm not sure if it will be worth it but I'll probably give it a try because I've enjoyed Linux so far I also thought about running Windows inside of Linux but I would have to figure out how the GPU pass-through works and all that stuff and it just seems like way too much of a headache right now aside from my problems with Adobe here are some things I liked and didn't like about Hyperland and Arch let's start with the things I didn't like I didn't know this before trying Hyperland but you can't minimize Windows and it sounds so basic coming from Windows so if I want to minimize Firefox the only way to do that is just to close it or you could use a scratch pad which is like a special workspace so let's open Firefox again and if I press super shift s then I will move the Firefox window to a special workspace. So this is where all the things that I'm not going to be using should be. Maybe I can just switch the workspace, but I'm still used to minimizing windows. So that's why it was like really weird not to have that. Then it's really frustrating to deal with problems when you just want to have a stable system. And yeah, I know it's because I'm using Arch and because I'm a beginner, so it's okay. But if you're going to use another Linux distro, you're probably not going to have any issues. Just to give you some examples, some of the apps that came with IDE don't work for some reason like if I want to open let's say I want to open OBS it, it won't open I don't know why but it doesn't work OBS for example I tried to install Vivaldi but every time I open it nothing happens it's like it just stays like this then I also installed Spotify but I won't open it because every time I open it it crashes the PC I think that's everything I didn't like now about the things I liked as I said before when I first installed it I just couldn't believe how smooth everything works just look at this and the good thing about Arch is that you can choose every single thing that goes with it you basically have no bloatware unless you install it and coming from Windows where I had to install a lot of apps in order to replicate this workflow work a little bit slow from time to time maybe my Windows that run so light because they haven't done a clean install in like four years now you upgraded from windows 10 to 11 so maybe it's that i know some of you might think like it's a lot of work to make the switch so is it even worth it to switch to linux and is it better than windows and mac os the reality is that it depends in my opinion the best way to use your pc is to take advantage of the best things of every operating system maybe you use a mac because you like the battery life or because you use graphic design or video editing software then maybe you use windows because you like to play games and some competitive games have anti-cheats that only work with Windows and not Linux although Linux has improved a lot throughout the years in terms of gaming or maybe you just like Linux because it's lightweight tightly customizable and fits well with your daily workflow if you want to try something like Arch and Hyperland from scratch it'll take you a good amount of time unless you use something like IDE or Machi or you could also use another distro like Mint for example which kind of looks like Windows or maybe a GNOME with Fedora which is a little bit different so you could learn the basics in a shorter amount of time you can also try it in an old computer use a dual boot or just use it in a virtual machine like i did for this video and i've been learning all of this just for a month and the good thing is that once you know how everything works then you just won't keep wasting time unless you have to troubleshoot random problems with your system or maybe if you're addicted to rising your setup but that's not my case although i'm sure i'm gonna keep having some issues with arch for now until i learn how everything really works but now will i keep using linux probably Yes, but only when I'm not working because I still use Photoshop and Premiere Pro. And about Arch, I'm not sure because what I really liked is Hyperland. Arch is great, but I've seen many people having issues with it, mainly since it's a rolling release distro. That means that the system is always up to date. And that sounds great, but it also means that there's a higher chance something breaks after an update. I haven't experienced this, but I don't want it to happen. I've been thinking about maybe switching to another more stable distro. So if you've got any suggestions for something stable that works with Hyperland, just let me know. But if you're still using Windows and want to customize your setup a little bit to maximize your productivity and get a kind of similar vibe as Hyperland, make sure to watch this video right here.